Uh, I'm Tony Dor. I'm the manager of investor relations for Brainchip. Greetings from Perth in Western Australia, where it's almost midnight. And I'm going to skip over a few pages so we can get to the Q&A. If you want to read this presentation, it's in Chinese and English. And this is Brainchip. We're listed on the OTCQX under the code BCHPY and on the Australian Stock Exchange under the ticker code BRN. Next slide, please. We'll skip that slide. So let me introduce Brainship to you. This is my reason why I came to work for the company. I believe technology exists to benefit humanity. Technology helps humans solve our problems, ease our suffering, maximize our productivity and potential. I believe Brainship is trying to change the world for the better, and that's really cool. I want to be part of that and help realize that ambition. It's what drives me, inspires me, and motivates me to succeed. It's why I came to work for Brainship. That's why I invested my own money to become a shareholder in this company. Thank you. Next slide, please. So Brainship is a global technology company revolutionizing the future of artificial intelligence on the edge device itself. Brainship is the world's first commercial producer of neuromorphic processor embedded in a system on the chip. Our core product, the Akita chip, mimics the human brain's architecture, resulting in a revolutionary neuromorphic hardware solution that enables a new generation of AI on the edge. Our offices are in Aliso Viejo in Orange County in California, Toulouse in France, Hyderabad in India, and the Brainchip Research Institute here in Perth, Western Australia. I'll um, let you read the rest of those details. It's important to note that today, uh, our ADRs started trading on the OTCQX in the United States. And that's a, a breakthrough for us and a, and a great day to celebrate. Okay, so what is edge AI computing? Well, edge AI computing is the practice of performing AI processing on the device rather than send, sending data through the cloud to a data center for processing. And why is this important? Why does it matter? Well, these devices are not actually smart. Transmitting data to the cloud requires connectivity, it requires power, and it puts your data at risk. Unfortunately, the existing solutions available today that rely on traditional edge AI technology consume too much energy. They have low versatility and poor performance. That is until now. Next slide, please. So what is neuromorphic AI processing and how is it different from traditional AI? And how is Akita so disruptive to tradi traditional AI? Well, a traditional AI uses very high power. It has a brute force approach. And training in current AI systems require mass massive data sets. They can take hours, days or weeks, depending on the size of the network. Next slide, please. And here's why Akita is so much better. It's modeled after the way the human brain learns and processes information. It only processes information when an event takes place. That's called a spike. It can learn new data after detecting it as few as only one time. The neuromorphic chip performs AI very efficiently on the device at very low power and can learn in real time. Lower power equals lower heat, requiring no cooling. And that's important, I'll get to that later. Next slide, please. Once you start to imagine the potential commercial applications for this chip, the possibilities are endless. There are significant advantages with Edge AI, including data privacy, reduced latency, 
reduced internet bandwidth requirements, but there are also significant challenges to overcome. And there are plenty of examples of edge devices that would benefit from edge AI. Next slide, please. So this is the Akita Neuromorphic Chip. It's available now. It's on sale on our website. We have development systems available for purchase and it'll allow you to get the Akita chip, plug it into your computer and start to play with it straight away. This is a next generation neuromorphic chip. And the applications and the products that it's designed to go into will change the world. Essentially, we need to create our own market. We need to engage and educate, we need to demonstrate and we need to deliver. Next slide, please. I've covered most of that. Let's have the next slide, please. Right, so Akita can solve some of the big challenges facing our world today. And one of them is in the IoT space. We just simply can't keep up with the growth in data. The demand is so high, the number of devices being connected all the time within just the next three to four years, the number of IoT devices will double. That's going to put huge capacity constraints on the internet, slowing it down, and making it less efficient. We need to reduce the amount of demand for data by taking the data out of the cloud and onto the device. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. So let's look at traditional AI and how it consumes energy. And you'll start to realize that traditional AI is emissions intensive. You look at the amount of carbon emissions produced by traditional AI compared to Akita, you start to see how this could mount up to making a major difference in the fight against global climate change. Ask yourself also, if the data stays on the chip, then it can't be hacked. Data security is one of the greatest issues facing our society right now. Is the cloud really safe? Can your data be hacked? Not if it stays on the device, it won't. Next slide, please. One of the unique features of Akita is the fact that it can re replicate the five human senses. Smell, touch, feel, hearing, eyesight. It can process the data from all of those human senses. No other chip in the world can do that. It can taste difference between a Chardonnay and a Shiraz. And it can detect cancer in exhaled human breath. Next slide, please. So the market for edge AI devices is growing enormously. Just within the next five to six years, the market won't just double, it will triple in size. From our point of view, we are perfectly positioned to capture that growth and offer something new and exciting in the world of AI that's going to revolutionize not just how we design and manufacture chips, but the functions that artificial intelligence can, can perform and the applications that it can be introduced to. Next slide, please. <clears throat> we estimate that we have a two to three year lead out over our competition. And our competition are Intel and IBM. The nearest competitor to us is the Intel Lowy chip, which we estimate to be at least two to three years away from commercialization. It's currently just a research chip. And if you look at this graph closely, you'll realize it can't do many of the things that the Akita chip can do. 
our chip is already commercially available. It's in the market now. Next slide, please. So when you're considering investing in Brainchip, consider the company we keep. These are just some of the customers that have already signed up with Brainchip. Some of our early access program customers have been using our chip now for several months in testing and evaluation in new products. And we're excited to be announcing soon some new commercial agreements with some of our customers. Next slide, please. No, thank you. Next one. Okay. We have already signed our first, oh, okay. Uh, so our pathway to profit, our revenue streams will come from several sources. IP licensing, of which we've already signed one. Royalties from IP, which will come from the time when products start to sell, we start earning a royalty from every product sold for its lifetime. We will be providing engineering support to our customers. There will be chip and board commercial sales. And we'll also have other forms of fees. Thank you. Next slide. This is our management team. On the far left, Peter Vandermade the man who put the brain in brain chip. Peter invented the technology. He's the godfather of neuromorphic artificial intelligence. On the far right is Anil Mankar. Anil is the chip in brain chip. He designed it and built it and brought it into production. These two men, along with Ken and Rob, are the management team who've brought the first neuromorphic artificial intelligence chip to the world. Next slide, please. Yeah, I think we can skip that and we'll go straight to the Q&A if you like. Thank you for being here, uh, answering the questions. So now I next uh, go to the first one here from the English side, which is from Chris. And he's asking, do you have to keep, this is quite an interesting question. Do you have to keep advancing the, your Akita new processor in terms of this r and I guess? How difficult can another company develop something better along the way? Uh, that's a great question, thank you. Uh, as I indicated, we believe we have a two to three year lead out of, over our competition and our competition is huge. Uh, Intel, IBM, uh, other companies in the tech world, the amount of money they're spending on research and development in this field right now is huge. And unfortunately, they've all missed the opportunity to be the first. Uh, we are the first. Now, in terms of what happens, well, uh, Intel and others will try and catch us and bring out their own products. But uh, hopefully next year, but certainly within the next 12 to uh, 18 months, the second generation of Akita products, the Akita 2000 will be released. So we've got a pipeline of uh, new Akita products coming through, uh, through to the Akita 3000, which is currently in development. And we anticipate that we'll have third generation Akita products out in the market before our competitors even have their first generation. That's our, that's our goal. That's uh, wonderful to hear. This one coming from the Chinese side here from Wen C. He's uh, asking you how much uh, capital, how much money have you in uh, company invested since uh, from day one until now, approximately? Uh, approximately, uh, who knows? I, I don't know that answer to that question. Um, what I can tell you is that it's a tiny amount compared to the money that's been spent by IBM and Intel and Apple and Google and Tesla and all of the companies that are looking to develop next generation artificial intelligence. Uh, Peter van der Maid and Anil Mankar have developed this chip uh, on what would be considered a shoestring budget compared to what the other companies are spending. Okay, and the next one coming from uh, Wednesday to 
He asked you any comparable companies in the market for for investors to sort of follow uh, between you and other companies. That any comparable? Oh, uh, that's the difficulty with being the first company in a new disruptive technology. Uh, we have no competitors in our space yet. We are the first. Um, part of what we have to do, obviously, is we have to create interest and demand for our product, and convince people of how good it is, and get them to change. Uh, so, a lot of what our competitors are doing really doesn't bother us. Uh, they're chasing us. Uh, we now need to convince the audience out there, which is everyone in the world. Uh, that this technology will improve their lives, it will benefit humanity, and if it's used correctly, could uh, enhance uh, people's lives all around the world. And that's that's what I believe. So let's get one more question here from Lok. And Lok asks you: Are you looking for any partners or potential any joint ventures in the future? Um, I don't think we'd ever say no to any opportunity to grow our company. I think we're always on the lookout for opportunities. Uh, we are very focused right now on the commercialization strategy for our Akita chip, our Akita 1000. And while we are that focused on, on the commercialization, we're talking to a whole bunch of people, potential customers, potential investors, and a lot of companies in our space who really need to get to know uh, what Akita is all about. Uh, because we've made a lot of their products redundant in the process. Great. Okay, I think that answers all the questions here for, for you, Tony. So I'll let you go. Thank you again for joining us here today. Thanks, Gilbert. Thank you to everyone in the audience and thank you to everyone online. Thank you. Thank you.